All right, you guys, this is a quick little project. I'm actually not showcasing the project as much as a tool I've been using around here. I've had quite a few uh, people ask in the last few videos on these welding clamps I have. I got these guys. They can do T-joints and they can do 90 degree joints really well. They work pretty good and they're quite affordable on Amazon. There'll be a link below in the description where you can get these things where I purchased them. And uh, we'll go into a little more detail, talk about capacity and things like that in the video because it's a bit vague when you go to order and what you can actually fit in here. So stick around, check out the video guys. So this is basically what I was referring to as a T-joint. You can cross metal and continue it on through the clamp. I'll show you a few more joints you can weld with this. We got our typical 90 degree. And because this head pivots here, you can actually clamp different thicknesses metal. This is one and a quarter to one inch, and it clamps it perfectly fine. Ignore the gap right here. I never cut this piece square. It's just some scrap I had laying around. But this is two and a half inches wide. This is a square piece of two inch. And I think the capacity on this clamp is about two and three quarters. We'll open it up next and double check. So, all the way up, looks like on this biggest clamp, it's just a hair over three inch capacity on this one. Um, so that's that. This one's been pretty good. I've used it the longest. It's got a uh, copper plated thread, Acme thread on here, and it seems to be pretty good. They're all just cast. They're pretty heavy. This one's probably like eight or ten pounds, maybe a little more. They're pretty basic. They're just all made overseas, but it does a really good job of holding things square and uh, holding things while you weld it. You still got to keep in mind tack welding on here when you do weld on here. You need to make a point that you just don't start heating up at each side because you can still get a lot of pulling with metal if you just start welding all the way down so even if this thing holds it square you need to still keep in mind how you weld your joints to keep the metal from pulling too hard another nice thing i'll flip this over and show you if you're working on smaller pieces you can get around to all different angles with the clamp so another nice thing about these clamps is they got this cutaway on the back here so you can get to all four sides of the joint to tack weld it but just because you have the clamp holding your metal 90 degrees doesn't always mean you're going to get a perfect joint. Depends on how you go about welding. I always like to spot weld all the four corners and then try not to apply too much heat to the joint, especially if it's critical to keep it at 90. Because when welds cool down, they shrink and metal does some weird things. So uh, just pay attention when you're welding with these things and any joints where you're putting your heat down. There's a lot of good videos on there how to weld corner joints, so something to keep in mind. One thing I want to note, if you're passing through the metal here, it has a slightly smaller capacity. It looks like it's about eh, maybe two and three quarters. Something to consider on there. So this is the mid-size I have. The quality on this one doesn't quite seem as good, but it should do if just fine still. It just doesn't have the copper-coated uh, Acme thread. It looks a little more cheaply made. Um, still quite heavy. It's still cast. The weird thing about this one is it looks like it clamps to just a hair under two and a half inch capacity. That's kind of weird. They should have made it two and a half. So if you get this one, keep in mind, it looks like you'll do two and a quarter great, but not much uh, bigger than that. Um, yeah, it still has that pass through. You can still pass through metal. We'll check the capacity on that. It actually looks like that's limited to maybe one and three quarters pass through. <laughs> All right, the capacity, the pass-through capacity on the mid-size one looks like it's actually about one and three quarters. So just keep that in mind for most of the metal you're going to be working with. So here's the smallest of all the clamps. I haven't actually used it yet. I'm going to try it out on this job. I got it a few weeks ago for future projects. It's very affordable, but I knew it was going to be light. I knew it was made out of cast aluminum, but boy, it just has a feel of cheapness with uh, cast aluminum. It's only like a pound and a half does have a little chrome plated Acme thread on here. Um, I don't think this would be my only clamp if I ever had one. I'd put the money into one of these blue ones. But you know, I got it for uh, the reason is sometimes these are kind of heavy to have them up if you're welding up like a coffee table and you're joining the parts together. If you don't have another person to help you hold stuff, it's kind of hard to clamp uh, joints like that. So I figured this one would be nice and light. I could hold it up in the air, clamp something, and come back to it later. And even if I have to put a nicer metal clamp on one of these steel blue ones on it to finalize the weld, I just figured it might be nice to just hold things while I'm welding on other projects. And uh, verdict's still out yet, but if it does work fairly good for that job, I'll buy a few because they're so affordable. I'll just have them on the wall for occasional use. So maximum 90 degree capacity looks like about two and three quarter inches and we'll measure the cross through capacity here. All right, for doing T-joints, looks like the maximum capacity is, yeah, I'm gonna say just barely over one and a half inches. So just uh, keep that in mind.
All right, you guys, because this is such thin metal at 16 gauge, I could wire feed it, no problem. But I actually want to get a little more practice in on TIG welding. I've been learning how to do it with these welders here. And uh, this is a special rod. It's a brazing rod for TIG. You still have to use 100% argon gas. I could not find this stuff anywhere in any welding shops around my town, so I had to order on Amazon. There will also be a link below to where I found this in case you guys are interested in doing any brazing. It takes special kind of rod for brazing with the TIG rather than uh, oxygen acetylene. And it's a silicon bronze rod. But uh, yeah, keep in mind uh, if you want to look for that stuff, there's a link below. I tracked it down on Amazon. All right, we'll get started here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just do some tack brazes on here and then build the whole gate and then come back through and braze it complete. Alright you guys, got the baby gate about finished. I'm not going to carry you guys along the rest of the build because I need to make some little slider runners so this thing will slide back and forth. But one quick note about this stuff, this is metal mesh. I found a pretty cheap source for it. Might be good for dog pens and different things. I previously made a little wood stove guard to keep the baby away from the wood stove. And this stuff you can get at Home Depot. I think it's uh, in the concrete section. I think they're four by five or four by six panels. They're pretty cheap. And they're designed to be put in the floor for like mini rebar. So that's just a quick note. If you guys are looking for anything like this, that's where I found it. Um, back to the clamps, got to use this little one today. And it's pretty light duty, like I said, but for the $15 range it costs, um, I think it'd be useful for certain light jobs. Like I said, just an extra set of hands pretty much to hold things. This one I've used only a little bit and it seemed to work just fine, just has a smaller capacity, but it works pretty damn good. Um, the reason I ordered this one is the biggest one only seems to become on and off again if it's available through the vendor. So uh, yeah, I ordered this one to kind of replace, have an extra one of these. Down the road I'm going to order a few more of the same exact sizes here just because it's nice and on a weld table to lay everything out and have these corner clamps a few extras. And one final thing to note is if you only have one of these clamps, measure the distance between measure the distance between the height of this and the table and make yourself some little blocks of the same height. So when you're laying this out, you can have a corner clamp in one of the corners and have your metal blocks on your welding table in the other corners just to kind of support it, make it level. All right, I hope this information helped you guys out. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. Take care, guys. Bye.